Armored Fighting Vehicle An armored fighting vehicle, AFV, is an armed combat vehicle protected by armor, generally combining operational mobility with offensive and defensive capabilities. AFVs can be wheeled or tracked. Main battle tanks, armored cars, armored self-propelled guns, and armored personnel carriers are all examples of AFVs. Armored fighting vehicles are classified according to their intended role on the battlefield and characteristics. The classifications are not absolute, two countries may classify the same vehicle differently, and the criteria change over time. For example, relatively lightly armed armored personnel carriers were largely superseded by infantry fighting vehicles with much heavier armament in a similar role. Successful designs are often adapted to a wide variety of applications. For example, the Muag Piranha, originally designed as an APC, has been adapted to fill numerous roles such as a mortar carrier, infantry fighting vehicle, and assault gun. The concept of a highly mobile and protected fighting unit has been around for centuries, from Hannibal's war elephants to Leonardo's contraptions, military strategists endeavor to maximize the mobility and survivability of their soldiers. Armored fighting vehicles were not possible until internal combustion engines of sufficient power became available at the start of the 20th century. Modern armored fighting vehicles represent the realization of an ancient concept, that of providing troops with mobile protection and firepower. Armies have deployed war machines and cavalries with rudimentary armor in battle for millennia. Use of these animals and engineering design sought to achieve a balance between the conflicting paradoxical needs of mobility, firepower and protection. Siege engines, such as battering rams and siege towers, would often be armored in order to protect their crews from enemy action. Polyodus of Thessaly developed a very large movable siege tower, the Helipolis, as early as 340 BC, and Greek forces used such structures in the Siege of Rhodes 305 BC. The idea of a protected fighting vehicle has been known since antiquity. Frequently cited is Leonardo da Vinci's 15th century sketch of a mobile, protected gun platform. The drawings show a conical, wooden shelter with apertures for cannons around the circumference. The machine was to be mounted on four wheels, which would be turned by the crew through a system of hand cranks and cage, or lantern, gears. Leonardo claimed, I will build armored wagons which will be safe and invulnerable to enemy attacks. There will be no obstacle which it cannot overcome. Modern replicas have demonstrated that the human crew would have been able to move it over only short distances. Hussite forces in Bohemia developed war wagons, medieval weapon platforms, around 1420 during the Hussite Wars. These heavy wagons were given protective sides with firing slits, their heavy firepower came from either a cannon or from a force of hand gunners and crossbowmen, supported by infantry using pikes and flails. Heavy arquebuses mounted on wagons were called arquebus akrok. These carried a ball of about. The first modern AFVs were armed cars dating back virtually to the invention of the motor car. The British inventor F. R. Sims designed and built the Motor Scout in 1898. It was the first armed, petrol-engine-powered vehicle ever built. It consisted of a Didion Boton quadricycle with a Maxim machine gun mounted on the front bar. An iron shield offered some protection for the driver from the front, but it lacked all-around protective armor. The armored car was the first modern fully armored fighting vehicle. The first of these was the Sims Motor War Car. Designed by Sims and built by Vickers, Sons and Maxim in 1899. The vehicle had Vickers armor 6 mm thick and was powered by a 4-cylinder 3.3-liter 16-horsepower Canstadt Daimler engine giving it a maximum speed of around. The armament, consisting of two Maxim guns, was carried in two turrets with 360 degrees traverse. Another early armored car of the period was the French Chiron, Giraudot et Boyd 1902. Presented at the Salon de l'Automobile at Ducycle in Brussels, on March 8, 1902. The vehicle was equipped with a Hotchkiss machine gun, and with 7mm armor for the gunner. Armored cars were first used in large numbers on both sides during World War I as scouting vehicles. In 1903, H. G. Wells published the short story The Land Ironclads, positing indomitable war machines that would bring a new age of land warfare. The way steam-powered ironclad warships had ended the age of sail. Wells' literary vision was realized in 1916, when, amidst the Pyrrhic standstill of the Great War, the British Land Ships Committee deployed revolutionary armored vehicles to break the stalemate. The tank was envisioned as an armored machine that could cross ground under fire from machine guns and reply with its own mounted machine guns and cannons. 
These first British heavy tanks of World War I moved on caterpillar tracks that had substantially lower ground pressure ethan wheeled vehicles, enabling them to pass the muddy, pocked terrain and slit trenches of the Battle of the Somme. The tank eventually proved highly successful and, as technology improved, it became a weapon that could cross large distances at much higher speeds than supporting infantry and artillery. The need to provide the units that would fight alongside the tank led to the development of a wide range of specialized AFVS, especially during the Second World War, 1939-1945. The armored personnel carrier, designed to transport infantry troops to the front line, emerged towards the end of World War I. During the first actions with tanks, it had become clear that close contact with infantry was essential in order to secure ground won by the tanks. Troops on foot were vulnerable to enemy fire but they could not be transported in the tank because of the intense heat and noxious atmosphere. In 1917, Lieutenant G. R. Rackham was ordered to design an armored vehicle that could fight and carry troops or supplies. The Mark IX tank was built by Armstrong, Whitworth and Company, although just three vehicles had been finished at the time of the armistice in November 1918, and only 34 were built in total. Different tank classifications emerged in the interwar period. The tank hat was conceived as a mobile, two-man model mainly intended for reconnaissance. In 1925, Sir John Carden and Vivian Lloyd produced the first such design, the Carden Lloyd Tankette. Tankette tank hat. Tank saw use in the Italian Royal Army during the Italian invasion of Ethiopia, 1935-1936, the Spanish Civil War, 1936-1939, and almost everywhere Italian soldiers fought during World War II. The Imperial Japanese Army used tank hats for jungle warfare. The British gun carrier Mark I, the first self-propelled artillery, was fielded in 1917. It was based on the first tank, the British Mark I, and carried a heavy field gun. The next major advance was the Birch Gun, 1925, developed for the Motorized Warfare Experimental Brigade, the Experimental Mechanized Force. This mounted a field gun, capable of the usual artillery trajectories, on a tank-style chassis. During World War II, most major military powers developed self-propelled artillery vehicles. These had guns mounted on a tracked chassis, often that of an obsolete or superseded tank, and provided an armored superstructure to protect the gun and its crew. The first British design, Bishop, carried the 25 PDR gun howitzer, but in a mounting that severely limited the gun's performance. It was replaced by the more effective Sexton. The Germans built many lightly armored self-propelled anti-tank guns using captured French equipment. For example Martyr I, their own obsolete light tank Cassis, Martyr II, or x check chassis, Martyr III. These led to better protected tank destroyers, built on a medium tank chassis such as the Jagdbans arrived or the Jagdpanther. The self-propelled anti-aircraft weapon debuted in World War I. The German 88mm anti-aircraft gun was truck-mounted and used to great effect against British tanks, and the British QF 3-inch 20 weight was mounted on trucks for use on the Western Front. Although the Birch gun was a general-purpose artillery piece on an armored tracked chassis, it was capable of elevation for anti-aircraft use. Vickers Armstrong developed one of the first spa ogs based on the chassis of the Mk.E6 ton light tank slash Dragon medium Mark IV tractor, mounting a Vickers QF1 pom-pom gun of 40 mm. The Germans fielded the SDK FZ 10 fourths and 6 halves, cargo half-tracks mounting single 20 mm or 37 mm AA guns, respectively. By the start of the war, rocket launchers such as the Soviet Katyusha originated in the late 1930s. The Wehrmacht fielded self-propelled rocket artillery in World War II, the Panzer Warfron Warfram and 40 equipped half-track armored fighting vehicles. By the end of World War II, most modern armies had vehicles to carry infantry, artillery and anti-aircraft weaponry. Most modern AFVs are superficially similar in design to their World War II counterparts but with significantly better armor, weapons, engines, electronics, and suspension. The increase in the capacity of transport aircraft makes possible and practicable the transport of AFVs by air. Many armies are replacing some or all of their traditional heavy vehicles with lighter air mobile versions, often with wheels instead of tracks. The level of armor protection between AFVs varies greatly. A main battle tank will normally be designed to take hits from other tank guns and anti-tank missiles, while flight reconnaissance vehicles are often only armored just in case. Whilst heavier armor provides better protection, it makes vehicles less mobile for a given engine power, limits its air transportability, increases cost, 
uses more fuel and may limit the places it can go, for example, many bridges may be unable to support the weight of the main battle tank. A trend toward composite armor is taking the place of steel, composites are stronger for a given weight, allowing the tank to be lighter for the same protection as steel armor, or better protected for the same weight. Armor is being supplemented with active protection systems on a number of vehicles, allowing the AFV to protect itself from incoming projectiles. The level of protection also usually varies considerably throughout the individual vehicle too, depending on the role of the vehicle and the likely direction of attack. For example, a main battle tank will usually have the heaviest armor on the hull front and the turret, lighter armor on the sides of the hull and the thinnest armor on the top and bottom of the tank. Other vehicles, such as the MRAP family, may be primarily armored against the threat from IEDs and so will have heavy, sloped armor on the bottom of the hull. Weaponry varies by a very wide degree between AFVs, lighter vehicles for infantry carrying, reconnaissance or specialist roles may have only a cannon or machine gun, or no armament at all, whereas heavy self-propelled artillery will carry large guns, mortars or rocket launchers. These weapons may be mounted on a pintle, affixed directly to the vehicle or placed in a turret or cupola. The greater the recoil of the weapon on an AFV, the larger the turret ring needs to be. A larger turret ring necessitates a larger vehicle. To avoid listing to the side, turrets on amphibious vehicles are usually located at the center of the vehicle. Grenade launchers provide a versatile launch platform for a plethora of munitions, including smoke, phosphorus, tear gas, illumination, anti personnel, infrared, and radar jamming rounds. Turret stabilization is an important capability because it enables firing on the move and prevents crew fatigue. Modern AFVs have primarily used either petrol, gasoline, or diesel piston engines. More recently, gas turbines have been used. Most early AFVs used petrol engines, as they offer a good power to weight ratio. However, they fell out of favor during World War II due to the flammability of the fuel. Most current AFVs are powered by a diesel engine. Modern technology, including the use of turbocharging, helps to overcome the lower power to weight ratio of diesel engines compared to petrol. Gas turbine, turboshaft, engines offer a very high power to weight ratio and were starting to find favor in the late 20th century, however, they offer very poor fuel consumption and as such some armies are switching from gas turbines back to diesel engines, i.e. the Russian T-80 used a gas turbine engine, whereas the later T-90 does not. The US M1 Abrams is a notable example of a gas turbine-powered tank. Notable armored fighting vehicles extending from post-World War I to today. The tank is an all-terrain AFV designed to fill almost all battlefield roles and to engage enemy forces by the use of direct fire and the frontal assault role. Though several configurations have been tried, particularly in the early experimental golden days of tank development, a standard, mature design configuration has since emerged to a generally accepted pattern. This features a main tank gun or artillery gun, mounted in a fully rotating turret atop a tracked automotive hull, with various additional secondary weapon systems throughout. Philosophically, the tank is, by its very nature, an offensive weapon. Being a protective encasement with at least one gun position, it is essentially a pillbox or small fortress, though these are static fortifications of a purely defensive nature, that can move toward the enemy. Hence its offensive utility. Psychologically, the tank is a force multiplier that has a positive morale effect on the infantry it accompanies. It also instills fear in the opposing force who can often hear and even feel their arrival. Tanks were classified either by size or by role. Classification by relative size was common, as this also tended to influence the tank's role. Over time, tanks tended to be designed with heavier armor and weapons, increasing the weight of all tanks. So these classifications are relative to the average for the nation's tanks for any given period. An older tank design might be reclassified over time, such as the tank being first deployed as a medium tank, but in later years relegated to light tank roles. Tanks were also classified by roles that were independent of size, such as cavalry tank, cruiser tank, fast tank, infantry tank, tank destroyer, assault tank, or breakthrough tank. Military theorists initially tended to assign tanks to traditional military infantry, cavalry, and artillery roles, but later developed more specialized roles unique to tanks. In modern use, the heavy tank has fallen out of favor, being supplanted by more heavily armed and armored descendant of the medium tanks, the universal main battle tank. 
The light tank has, in many armies, lost favor to cheaper, faster, lighter armored cars, however, light tanks, or similar vehicles with other names, are still in service with a number of forces as reconnaissance vehicles, most notably the Russian Marines with the PT-76, the British Army with the Scimitar, and the Chinese Army with the Type 63. Modern main battle tanks are universal tanks incorporate recent advances in automotive, artillery, armor, and electronic technology to combine the best characteristics of the historic medium and heavy tanks into a single, all-around type. They are also the most expensive to mass produce. A main battle tank is distinguished by its high level of firepower, mobility, and armor protection relative to other vehicles of its era. It can cross comparatively rough terrain at high speeds, but its heavy dependency on fuel, maintenance, and ammunition makes it logistically demanding. It has the heaviest armor of any AFVs on the battlefield, and carries a powerful precision guided munition weapon systems that may be able to engage a wide variety of both ground targets and air targets. Despite significant advances in anti-tank warfare, it still remains the most versatile and fearsome land-based weapon systems of the 21st century, valued for its shock action and high survivability. A tank head is a tracked armed and armored vehicle resembling a small ultralight tank or super light tank roughly the size of a car, mainly intended for light infantry support or scouting. They were one or two man vehicles armed with a machine gun. Colloquially it may also simply mean a small tank. Tankettes were designed and built by several nations between the 1920s and 1940s. They were very popular with smaller countries. Some saw some combat, with limited success, in World War II. However, the vulnerability of their light armor eventually caused the concept to be abandoned. The term super heavy tank has been used to describe armored fighting vehicles of extreme size, generally over 75 tons. Programs have been initiated on several occasions with the aim of creating an invincible siege work slash breakthrough vehicle for penetrating enemy formations and fortifications without fear of being destroyed in combat. Examples were designed in World War I and World War II, such as the Panzer VIII Mouse, along with a few in the Cold War. However, few working prototypes were built and there are no clear evidence any of these vehicles saw combat as their immense size would have made most designs impractical. A flame tank is an otherwise standard tank equipped with a flamethrower, most commonly used to supplement combined arms attacks against fortifications, confined spaces, or other obstacles. The type only reached significant use in the Second World War, during which the United States, Soviet Union, Germany, Italy, Japan and the United Kingdom, including members of the British Commonwealth, all produced flamethrower-equipped tanks. Usually, the flame projector replaced one of the tank's machine guns, however, some flame projectors replaced the tank's main gun. Fuel for the flame weapon was generally carried inside the tank, although a few designs mounted the fuel externally, such as the armored trailer used on the Churchill Crocodile. Flame tanks have been superseded by thermobaric weapons such as the Russian TOS-1. The idea for this tank was developed during World War I by British and French. The infantry tank was designed to work in concert with infantry in the assault moving mostly at a walking pace, and carrying heavy armor to survive defensive fire. Its main purpose was to suppress enemy fire, crush obstacles such as barbed wire entanglements, and protect the infantry on their advance into and through enemy lines by giving mobile overwatch and cover. The French Renault FT was the first iteration of this concept. The British and French retained the concept between the wars and into the Second World War era. Because infantry tanks did not need to be fast, they could carry heavy armor. One of the best-known infantry tanks was the Matilda II of World War II. Other examples include the French R-35, the British Valentine, and the British Churchill. A cruiser tank, or cavalry tank, was designed to move fast and exploit penetrations of the enemy front. The idea originated in Plan 1919, a British plan to break the trench deadlock of World War I in part via the use of high-speed tanks. The first cruiser tank was the British Whippet. Between the wars, this concept was implemented in the fast tanks pioneered by J. Walter Christie. These led to the Soviet BT tank series and the British cruiser tank series. During World War II, British cruiser tanks were designed to complement infantry tanks, exploiting gains made by the latter to attack and disrupt the enemy rear areas. In order to give them the required speed, cruiser designs sacrificed armor and armament compared to the infantry tanks. Pure British cruisers were generally replaced by more capable medium tanks such as the U.S. Sherman and, to a lesser extent, the Cromwell by 1943. The Soviet fast tank, Bistro Kodny tank, 
or BT tank, classification also came out of the infantry-slash-cavalry concept of armored warfare and formed the basis for the British cruisers after 1936. The T-34 was a development of this line of tanks as well, though their armament, armor, and all-round capability placed them firmly in the medium tank category. The armored car is a wheeled, often lightly armored, vehicle adapted as a fighting machine. Its earliest form consisted of a motorized ironside chassis fitted with firing ports. By World War I, this had evolved into a mobile fortress equipped with command equipment, searchlights, and machine guns for self-defense. It was soon proposed that the requirements for the armament and layout of armored cars be somewhat similar to those on naval craft, resulting in turreted vehicles. The first example carried a single revolving cupola with a Vickers gun. Modern armored cars may boast heavier armament ranging from twin machine guns to large caliber cannon. Some multi-axled wheeled fighting vehicles can be quite heavy, and superior to older or smaller tanks in terms of armor and armament. Others are often used in military marches and processions, or for the escorting of important figures. Under peacetime conditions, they form an essential part of most standing armies. Armored car units can move without the assistance of transporters and cover great distances with fewer logistical problems than tracked vehicles. During World War II, armored cars were used for reconnaissance alongside scout cars. Their guns were suitable for some defense if they encountered enemy armored vehicles, but they were not intended to engage enemy tanks. Armored cars have since been used in the offensive role against tanks with varying degrees of success, most notably during the South African Border War, Toyota War the invasion of Kuwait, and other lower-intensity conflicts. An Arasani, literally Aris-led, is a type of propeller-driven snowmobile, running on skis, used for communications, mail deliveries, medical aid, emergency recovery and border patrolling in northern Russia, as well as for recreation. Arasanis were used by the Soviet Red Army during the Winter War and World War II. The first Arasanis may have been built by young Igor Sikorsky in 1909-10 before he built multi-engine airplanes and helicopters. They were very light plywood vehicles on skis, propelled by old airplane engines and propellers. A scout car is a military armored reconnaissance vehicle, capable of off-road mobility and often carrying mounted weapons such as machine guns for offensive capabilities and crew protection. They often only carry an operational crew aboard, which differentiates them from wheeled armored personnel carriers, APCS and infantry mobility vehicles, IMVs. But early scout cars, such as the open-topped USM-3 scout car could carry a crew of seven. The term is often used synonymously with the more general term armored car, which also includes armored civilian vehicles. They are also differentiated by being designed and built for purpose, as opposed to improvised technicals which might serve in the same role. A reconnaissance vehicle, also known as a scout vehicle, is a military vehicle used for forward reconnaissance. Both tracked and wheeled reconnaissance vehicles are in service. In some nations, light tanks such as the M551 Sheridan and AMX-13 are also used by scout platoons. Reconnaissance vehicles are usually designed with a low profile or small size and are lightly armored, relying on speed and cover to escape detection. Their armament ranges from a medium machine gun to a large cannon. Modern examples are often fitted with ATGMs and a wide range of sensors. Some armored personnel carriers and infantry mobility vehicle such as the M113, TPZ Fuchs, and Cadillac Gage Commando double in the reconnaissance role. An internal security vehicle, ISV, also known as an armored security vehicle, ASV, is a combat vehicle used for suppressing civilian unrest. Security vehicles are typically armed with a turreted heavy machine gun and auxiliary medium machine gun. The vehicle is designed to minimize firepower dead space and the vehicle's weapons can be depressed to a maximum of 12 degrees. Non-lethal water cannons and tear gas cannons can provide suppressive fire in lieu of unnecessary deadly fire. The vehicle must be protected against weapons typical of riots. Protection from incendiary devices is achieved though coverage of the air intake and exhaust ports as well as a strong locking mechanism on the fuel opening. Turret and door locks prevent access to the interior of the vehicle by rioters. Vision blocks. Ballistic glass and window shutters and outside surveillance cameras allow protected observation from within the vehicle. Wheeled 4x4 and 6x6 configurations are typical of security vehicles. Tracked security vehicles are often cumbersome and leave negative political connotations for being perceived as an imperial invading force. 
an improvised fighting vehicle is a combat vehicle resulting from modifications to a civilian or military non-combat vehicle in order to give it a fighting capability. Such modifications usually consist of the grafting of armor plating and weapon systems. Various militaries have procured such vehicles, ever since the introduction of the first automobiles into military service. During the early days, the absence of a doctrine for the military use of automobiles or of an industry dedicated to producing them, lead to much improvisation in the creation of early armored cars, and other such vehicles. Later, despite the advent of arms industries in many countries, several armies still resorted to using ad hoc contraptions, often in response to unexpected military situations, or as a result of the development of new tactics for which no available vehicle was suitable. The construction of improvised fighting vehicles may also reflect the lack of means for the force that uses them. This is especially true in developing countries, where various armies and guerrilla forces have used them, as they are more affordable than military grade combat vehicles. Modern examples include military gun truck used by units of regular armies or other official government armed forces, based on a conventional cargo truck, that is able to carry a large weight of weapons and armor. They have mainly been used by regular armies to escort military convoys in regions subject to ambush by guerrilla forces. Narco tanks, used by Mexican drug cartels in the Mexican drug war, are built from such trucks, which combines operational mobility, tactical offensive, and defensive capabilities. Troop carrying AFVs are divided into three main types, armored personnel carriers, APCs, infantry fighting vehicles. IFVs, and Infantry Mobility Vehicles IMV. The main difference between the three is their intended role, the APC is designed purely to transport troops and is armed for self-defense only, whereas the IFV is designed to provide close quarters and anti-armor fire support to the infantry it carries. IMV is a wheeled armored personnel carrier serving as a military patrol, reconnaissance or security vehicle. Armored Personnel Carriers APCs, are intended to carry infantry quickly and relatively safely to the point where they are deployed. In the Battle of Amiens, August 8, 1918, the British MKV, Mark V Star, tank carried a small number of machine gunners as an experiment, but the men were debilitated by the conditions inside the vehicle. Later that year the first purpose-built APC, the British MK9, Mark IX, appeared. In 1944, the Canadian General Guy Simons ordered the conversion of redundant armored vehicles to carry troops, generically named kangaroos. This proved highly successful, even without training, and the concept was widely used in the 21st Army Group. Post-war, specialized designs were built, such as the Soviet BTR-60 and USM-113. An infantry fighting vehicle, IFV, also known as a mechanized infantry combat vehicle, MICV is a type of armored fighting vehicle used to carry infantry into battle and provide direct fire support. The first example of an IFV was the West German Schutzenpanzer Lang HS.30 which served in the Bundeswehr from 1958 until the early 1980s. IFVs are similar to armored personnel carriers, APCs, and infantry carrier vehicles, ICVs, designed to transport a section or squad of infantry, generally between 5 and 10 men, and their equipment. They are differentiated from APCS, which are purely troop transport vehicles armed only for self-defense, because they are designed to give direct fire support to the dismounted infantry and so usually have significantly enhanced armament. IFVs also often have improved armor and some have firing ports, allowing the infantry to fire personal weapons while mounted. They are typically armed with an autocannon of 20-40mm to 40 millimeters caliber. 7.62 mm machine guns, anti-tank missiles, ATGMs, and or surface-to-air missiles, SAMs. IFVs are usually tracked, but some wheeled vehicles fall into this category. IFVs are generally less heavily armed and armored than main battle tanks. They sometimes carry anti-tank missiles to protect and support infantry against armored threats, such as the NATO tow missile and Soviet bastion, which offer a significant threat to tanks. Specially equipped IFVs have taken on some of the roles of light tanks, they are used by reconnaissance organizations, and light IFVs are used by airborne units which must be able to fight without the heavy firepower of tanks. An infantry mobility vehicle, IMV, or protected patrol vehicle, PPV, is a wheeled armored personnel carrier, APC, serving as a military patrol, reconnaissance or security vehicle. Examples include the ATF Dingo, AMC Tsik, AMZ Tour, Mungo ESK, 
and Bushmaster IMV. This term also applies to the vehicles currently being fielded as part of the MRAP program. IMVs were developed in response to the threats of modern counterinsurgency warfare, with an emphasis on ambush protection and mine resistance. Similar vehicles existed long before the term IMV was coined, such as the French VOB and South African Bufil. The term is coming more into use to differentiate light 4x4 wheeled APCs from the traditional 8x8 wheeled APCs. It is a neologism for what might have been classified in the past as an armored scout car, such as the BRDM but the IMV is distinguished by having a requirement to carry dismountable infantry. The up-armored M1114 Humvee variant can be seen as an adaptation of the unarmored Humvee to serve in the IMV role. Many modern military vehicles, ranging from light-wheeled command and reconnaissance, through armored personnel carriers and tanks, are manufactured with amphibious capabilities. Contemporary wheeled armored amphibians include the French Véhicule de Lavon Blinda and Véhicule Blinda Léger. The latter is a small, Lightly armored 4x4 all-terrain vehicle that is fully amphibious and can swim at 5.4 km per hour. The VOB, Véhicule de Lavon Blinda, armored vanguard vehicle, is a fully amphibious armored personnel carrier powered in the water by two water jets, that entered service in 1976 and produced in numerous configurations, ranging from basic personnel carrier, anti-tank missile platform. During the Cold War the Soviet bloc states developed a number of amphibious APCs. Fighting vehicles and tanks, both wheeled and tracked. Most of the vehicles the Soviets designed were amphibious, or could ford deep water. Wheeled examples are the BRDM 1 and BRDM 2 4x4 armored scout cars, as well as the BTR 60, BTR 70, BTR 80, and BTR 94 8x8 armored personnel carriers and the BTR 90 infantry fighting vehicle. The United States started developing a long line of landing vehicle tracked, LVT. Designs from CA. 1940. The U.S. Marine Corps currently uses the OV 7A1 assault amphibious vehicle, which was to be succeeded by the expeditionary fighting vehicle, which was capable of planing on water and can achieve water speeds off 37 to 46 km per hour. The EFV project has been cancelled. A significant amount of tracked armored vehicles that are primarily intended for land use have some amphibious capability, tactically useful inland reducing dependence on bridges. They use their tracks, sometimes with added propeller or water jets for propulsion. As long as the banks have a shallow enough slopes to enter or leave the water they can cross rivers and water obstacles. Some heavy tanks can operate amphibiously with a fabric skirt to add buoyancy. The Sherman DD tank used in the Normandy landings had this setup. When in water the waterproof float screen was raised and propellers deployed. Some modern vehicles use a similar skirt. Modern engineering AFVs utilize chassis based on main battle tank platforms, these vehicles are as well armored and protected as tanks, designed to keep up tanks, conduct obstacle breaching operations to help tanks get to wherever it needs to be, perform utility functions necessary to expedite emission objectives of tanks, and to conduct other earth moving and engineering work on the battlefield. These vehicles go by different names depending upon country of use or manufacture. In the United States the term Combat Engineer Vehicle, CEV, is used, in the United Kingdom the term Armored Vehicle Royal Engineers, AVRE, is used, while in Canada and other Commonwealth nations the term Armored Engineer Vehicle, AEV, is used. There is no set template for what such a vehicle will look like, yet likely features include a large dozer blade or mine plows, a large caliber demolition cannon, augers, winches, excavator arms and cranes, or lifting booms. Although the term armored engineer vehicle is used specifically to describe these multi-purpose tank-based engineering vehicles, that term is also used more generically in British and Commonwealth militaries to describe all heavy tank-based engineering vehicles used in the support of mechanized forces. Thus, armored engineer vehicle used generically would refer to EVE, AVLB, assault breachers, and so on. Good examples of this type of vehicle include the Ectrogenover, the Russian IMR, and the USM-728 Combat Engineer Vehicle. A breaching vehicle is especially designed to clear pathways for troops and other vehicles through minefields and along roadside bombs and improvised explosive devices. These vehicles are equipped with mechanical or other means for the breaching of man-made obstacles. Common types of breaching vehicles include mechanical flails, mine plow vehicles, and mine roller vehicles. The armored bulldozer is a basic tool of combat engineering. 
These compact engineering vehicles combine the earth-moving capabilities of the bulldozer with armor which protects the vehicle and its operator in or near combat. Most are civilian bulldozers modified by addition of vehicle armor slash military equipment, but some are tanks stripped of armament and fitted with a dozer blade. Some tanks have bulldozer blades while retaining their armament, but this does not make them armored bulldozers as such, because combat remains the primary role, earth moving is a secondary task. An armored recovery vehicle, ARV, is a type of vehicle recovery armored fighting vehicle used to repair battle or mine damaged as well as broken down armored vehicles during combat, or to tow them out of the danger zone for more extensive repairs. To this end the term armored repair and recovery vehicle, ARRV, is also used. ARVs are normally built on the chassis of a main battle tank, MBT, but some are also constructed on the basis of other armored fighting vehicles, mostly armored personnel carriers, APCs. ARVs are usually built on the basis of a vehicle in the same class as they are supposed to recover, a tank-based ARV is used to recover tanks, while an APC-based one recovers APCs, but does not have the power to tow a much heavier tank. An armored vehicle launched bridge, AVLB, is a combat support vehicle, sometimes regarded as a subtype of combat engineering vehicle, designed to assist militaries in rapidly deploying tanks and other armored fighting vehicles across rivers. The AVLB is usually a tracked vehicle converted from a tank chassis to carry a folding metal bridge instead of weapons. The AVLB's job is to allow armored or infantry units to cross water, when a river too deep for vehicles to wade through is reached and no bridge is conveniently located, or sufficiently sturdy, a substantial concern when moving 60-ton tanks. The bridge layer unfolds and launches its cargo, providing a ready-made bridge across the obstacle in only minutes. Once the span has been put in place, the AVLB vehicle detaches from the bridge, and moves aside to allow traffic to pass. Once all of the vehicles have crossed, it crosses the bridge itself and reattaches to the bridge on the other side. It then retracts the span ready to move off again. A similar procedure can be employed to allow crossings of small chasms or similar obstructions. AVLBs can carry bridges of or greater in length. By using a tank chassis, the bridge layer is able to cover the same terrain as main battle tanks, and the provision of armor allows them to operate even in the face of enemy fire. However, this is not a universal attribute. Some exceptionally sturdy 6x6 or 8x8 truck chassis have lent themselves to bridge layer applications. The combat engineer section carriers are used to transport sappers, combat engineers, and can be fitted with a bulldozer's blade and other mine breaching devices. They are often used as APCs because of their carrying ability and heavy protection. They are usually armed with machine guns and grenade launchers and usually track to provide enough tractive force to push blades and rakes. Some examples are the USM-113 APC, IDF Puma, Nagmakan, Husky, and USM-1132 ESV, a striker variant. An anti-aircraft vehicle, also known as a self-propelled anti-aircraft weapon, SPAA, or self-propelled air defense system, SPAD, is a mobile vehicle with a dedicated anti-aircraft capability. The Russian equivalent of SPA August CSU, from Zenitnaya Samohodnaya Ustanovka. Anti-aircraft self-propelled mount. Specific weapon systems used include machine guns, autocannons, larger guns, or missiles, and some mount both guns and longer-ranged missiles. Platforms used include both trucks and heavier combat vehicles, such as APCs and tanks, which have protection from aircraft, artillery, and small arms fire for frontline deployment. Anti-aircraft guns are usually mounted in a quickly traversing turret with a high rate of elevation. For tracking fast-moving aircraft. They are often in dual or quadruple mounts, allowing a high rate of fire. Today, missiles, generally mounted on similar turrets, have largely supplanted anti-aircraft guns. Self-propelled artillery vehicles give mobility to artillery. Within the term are covered self-propelled guns, or howitzers, and rocket artillery. They are highly mobile, usually based on tracked chassis carrying either a large howitzer or other field gun or alternatively a mortar or some form of rocket or missile launcher. They are usually used for long-range and direct bombardment support on the battlefield. In the past, self-propelled artillery has included direct fire gun motor carriage vehicles, such as assault guns and tank destroyers, also known as self-propelled anti-tank guns. These have been heavily armored vehicles, the former providing danger close fire support for infantry and the latter acting as specialized anti-tank vehicles.
tanks. Modern self-propelled artillery vehicles may superficially resemble tanks, but they are generally lightly armored, too lightly to survive in direct fire combat. That, however, they protect their crews against shrapnel and small arms and are therefore usually included as armored fighting vehicles. Many are equipped with machine guns for defense against enemy infantry. The key advantage of self-propelled over towed artillery is that it can be brought into action much faster. Before towed artillery can be used, it has to stop, unlimber and the gun set up. To move position, the guns must be limbered up again and brought, usually towed, to the new location. By comparison, self-propelled artillery in combination with modern communications, can stop at a chosen location and begin firing almost immediately, then quickly move on to a new position. This ability is very useful in a mobile conflict and particularly on the advance. Conversely, towed artillery was and remains cheaper to build and maintain. It is also lighter and can be taken to places that self-propelled guns cannot reach, so despite the advantages of the self-propelled artillery, towed guns remain in the arsenals of many modern armies. An assault gun is a gun or howitzer mounted on a motor vehicle or armored chassis. Designed for use in the direct fire role and support of infantry when attacking other infantry or fortified positions. Historically, the custom built fully armored assault guns usually mounted the gun or howitzer in a fully enclosed casemate on a tank chassis. The use of a casemate instead of a gun turret limited these weapons' field of fire, but allowed a larger gun to be fitted relative to the chassis, more armor to be fitted for the same weight, and provided a cheaper construction. In most cases, these turretless vehicles also presented a lower profile ace a target for the enemy. A mortar carrier is a self propelled artillery vehicle carrying a mortar as its primary weapon. Mortar carriers cannot be fired while on the move and some must be dismounted to fire. In U.S. Army doctrine, mortar carriers provide close and immediate indirect fire support for maneuver units while allowing for rapid displacement and quick reaction to the tactical situation. The ability to relocate not only allows fire support to be provided where it is needed faster, but also allows these units to avoid counter-battery fire. Mortar carriers have traditionally avoided direct contact with the enemy. Many units report never using secondary weapons in combat. Prior to the Iraq War, American 120mm mortar platoons reorganized from 6 M1064 mortar carriers and 2 M577 fire direction centers, FDC to 4 M1064 and 1 FDC. The urban environment of Iraq made it difficult to utilize mortars. New technologies such as mortar ballistic computers and communication equipment and are being integrated. Modern era combat is becoming more reliant on direct fire support from mortar carrier machine guns. A multiple rocket launcher is a type of unguided rocket artillery system. Like other rocket artillery, multiple rocket launchers are less accurate and have a much lower, sustained, rate of fire than batteries of traditional artillery guns. However, they have the capability of simultaneously dropping many hundreds of kilograms off explosive, with devastating effect. The Korean Hwaja is an example of an early weapon system with a resemblance to the modern-day multiple rocket launcher. The first modern multiple rocket launcher was the German naval Werfer of the 1930s, a small towed artillery piece. Only later in World War II did the Allies deploy similar weapons in the form of the land mattress. The first self-propelled multiple rocket launchers, and arguably the most famous, were the Soviet BM-13 Katyushas, first used during World War II and exported to Soviet allies afterwards. They were simple systems in which a rack of launch rails was mounted on the back of a truck. This set the template for modern multiple rocket launchers. The Americans mounted tubular launchers atop M4 Sherman tanks to create the T-34 Calliope rocket launching tank, only used in small numbers as their closest equivalent to the Katyusha. Tank destroyers and tank hunters are armed with an anti-tank gun or missile launcher, and are designed specifically to engage enemy armored vehicles. Many have been based on a track tank chassis, while others are wheeled. Since World War II, main battle tanks have largely replaced gun-armed tank destroyers, although lightly armored anti-tank guided missile, ATGM, carriers are commonly used for supplementary long-range anti-tank engagements. In post-Cold War conflict, the resurgence of expeditionary warfare has seen the emergence of gun-armed wheel vehicles, sometimes called protected gun systems, which may bear a superficial resemblance to tank destroyers, but are employed as direct fire support units typically providing support in low-intensity operations such as Iraq and Afghanistan. These have the advantage of easier deployment, as only the largest air transports can carry a main battle tank 
and their smaller size makes them more effective in urban combat. Many forces IFBs carry anti-tank missiles in every infantry platoon, and attack helicopters have also added anti-tank capability to the modern battlefield. But there are still dedicated anti-tank vehicles with very heavy long-range missiles, or intended for airborne use. There have also been dedicated anti-tank vehicles built on ordinary armored personnel carrier or armored car chassis. Examples include the US M901 ITB, improved tow vehicle, and the Norwegian 142, both on an M113 chassis. Several Soviet ATGM launchers based on the BRDM reconnaissance car, the British FB 438 Swingfire and FB 102 Striker, and the German Rake 10 Jagdpanzer series built on the chassis of the HS 30 and Martyr IFB. An armor train is a railway train protected with armor. They are usually equipped with railroad cars armed with artillery and machine guns. They were mostly used during the late 19th and early 20th century, when they offered an innovative way to quickly move large amounts of firepower. Their use was discontinued in most countries when road vehicles became much more powerful and offered more flexibility, and because armored trains were too vulnerable to track sabotage as well as attacks from the air. However, the Russian Federation used improvised armored trains in the Second Chechen War in the late 1990s and 2000s. The railroad cars on an armored train were designed for many tasks, such as carrying guns and machine guns, infantry units, anti-aircraft guns. During World War II, the Germans would sometimes put a Freemgerat, such as a captured French Samua S-35 or Czech PZ KPFW 38T light tank, or Panzer II light tank, on a flatbed car which could be quickly offloaded by means of the ramp and used away from the range of the main railway line to chase down enemy partisans. Different types of armor were used to protect from attack by tanks. In addition to various metal plates, concrete and sandbags were used in some cases for improvised armored trains. Armored trains were sometimes escorted by a kind of rail tank called a drazine. One such example was the Litterina armored trolley, which had a cab in the front and rear each with a control set so it could be driven down the tracks in either direction. Litterina mounted two dual 7.92mm MG13 machine gun turrets from Panzer I light tanks. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.